Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to talk about some basics of grounding your station and your antenna. Very, very basic. Uh, if you have just one ground rod, where does it go? And I know that uh, there are people today telling you more and more about grounding and saying, you know, <laughs> I mean, we're going to get to the point where there's a ground rod every foot if we follow all that. Let's keep it as simple as we can. Uh, the question today comes from Rodney Presley and says, Hi Dave, can you use the same ground rod to ground two different dipole antennas without losing efficiency or performance from either antenna? And thanks from Rod. Um, Absolutely, you can. In fact, you can run your whole station with just one ground. Although, I will tell you, if you put up towers, it's probably um, mandatory, really, that you have one ground rod for each leg. And each leg goes out to the different ground rod, and then each ground rod is uh, looped around to be, quote, bonded. But we're not talking about towers and Yankees here. We're talking about a dipole. So let's put two dipoles up here, uh, one with a cable coming down here and another dipole over here with a cable coming down here. Now these are going to go into your, your shack, which I'll put right here. Okay, you're going to want to put a ground rod somewhere. The first ground rod that you put goes in next to your shack. And you're going to attach to this ground rod your lightning arresters. And there will be two, one for each antenna. And the lightning arrestor comes into here. And then the other one comes into here. These two wires then go into the house along with a ground to bond to your shack ground. Now your shack ground can be as simple as a short piece of pipe to which all of your equipment is connected for grounding reasons. And then a single ground wire. Um, I happen to use a number two uh, stranded, but uh, number six is fine. Or you can use uh, like copper, um, copper, not tape. Well, it is a tape, I guess, but a, a flat copper strip that can run out there. Uh, the thing is that RF, it's the, um, it's the surface area that's important because at RF, the RF does not penetrate a cable very much. Uh, it goes on the outside. It's called the skin effect. So the more skin per the amount of copper would be copper foil, right? Um, would give you a lot, but you want to make it uh, more than that for strength so that it won't come apart. Now, right here, in here, we've got one side of this cable. This is a coaxial cable with uh, a wire coming out of it, and it's got some braid in there. Okay, The braid is grounded over here at the lightning arrestor because it's on the outside of the coax. It's grounded. The inside is not grounded, and people worry about that. Well, that's what the lightning arrestor is for. It's a surge protector, and inside of it, there's a, a tube. Different ways of doing this, but basically what you've got in here is a spark gap. And it's got a gas in here, and that affects the voltage at which this thing sparks. And when this gets up to 30 or 40 volts, it'll spark across. Now, when it sparks, the actual impedance of a spark is pretty low. So it will drain off any charge, like from the wind, that causes it to get above the voltage that that'll take. Now, you'll note that if you have a high-power amplifier, you could easily exceed the voltage that that spark gap will spark at, and that's not good. So you want to make sure you have the right uh, spark spark plug, <laughs> the right spark cartridge uh, for the amount of power that you're running so that it um, won't 
zap things out. Okay, so you don't need a ground rod there or there. You need a ground rod here. Now the next step is somewhere your utility comes in and it's got its power and its meter box and there is a ground rod here with a copper wire running down to it. This varies a lot depending on the age of the house. Uh, in older houses the uh, water pipes are uh, copper or steel and uh, they are grounded by the steel water pipe or a copper water pipe that goes out to the street and so people grounded to that including the utilities. Now this became plastic. In my house in fact has plastic line and copper water pipes. Nowadays they don't even do copper water pipes in the house, they're plastic. And that will give you nothing because fresh water is a very poor conductor. And we don't like to run salt water around our houses. Salt water would be a great conductor, but most of us don't have the ocean in our backyard. Um, so anyway, you want to bond these two together with a number six. I would make it a bare wire and I'd bury it. Okay, now let's take a look at another alternative here. And that is the vertical antenna. Now I'm assuming here that you've got a vertical antenna that is classic ground mounted with radials on the ground. Okay, ground mounted antenna and it's got all these radials maybe 25 or 30 of them coming into a central point and then you've got the part that goes up these are insulated these connect to the outside of the coax shield again which is grounded over here but you want to ground it over here too so there's two ways you can do this um, well, I'll just tell you the, the easiest way is put a ground rod in right there and connect that ground rod with that so that this piece here is the feed line is grounded at the antenna and over here. Now, if you want, well, the inner part isn't. The inner part goes to that. If you want, you can put another... Um, uh, surge protector, lightning surge protector out here so that this thing which will pick up some charge just from the wind but also if there's a nearby lightning strike um, you can run that to ground right there without it doing things to your cable. Okay, So that's the second place you could put a ground right in. My uh, Step IR uh, ground, um, my Step IR, Big IR vertical is grounded a couple different ways. There are some buried uh, uninsulated uh, radials that are actually better as ground rods than they are as radials. There is a ground rod there too and there is uh, the cable coming out and going up here. I do not have a lightning arrestor right here and have not had any problems uh, with that because it gets over here where everything, all my lightning arresters are in one place. Okay, you don't really want a wire coming from your shack going to the tower or whatever without some sort of surge protector on it. Uh, okay, so there you have it. You've got uh, a single cable here will ground two dipoles very well. Okay, ground two dipoles very well. Um, and they will not affect each other's performance. Okay, and then you've got the ground strap going into your radio in here. Okay, so it's grounded there too. Now if you do this right, you won't run into any ground loops. If you run into any ground loops, try moving uh, cables around and so on. Um, there are all kinds of things that you can do. We can go over those in a separate video. So, um, Rodney, I hope that answers your question. So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, you may do so.
by going to dcastler.com support and picking a way that you find most helpful. Please also subscribe and click on the bell and click like and don't forget to comment. Until we next meet, 73.